In this uh, video, we'll talk about two more examples of sarcodena. We have already discussed three. So now we will take two more that is entamoeba <coughs> histolytica. Histolytica. This is <coughs> sorry, one example and it belongs to sarcodena. That means locomotion is with the help of pseudopodia. It was discovered by Lambley. This entamoeba histolytica, it is monogenetic. That means it completes its life cycle only in one host and that is human. It is found in intestine of human. And it is or its contamination or its infection is caused by direct or oral means. That means if we take contaminated food and water, then we get that infection. So it is monogenetic. It is dimorphic. That means it exists in two forms. And these two forms are minuta and magma. Now this magma is also known as the trophozoite stage. Magma is the pathogenic stage. This is pathogenic. That means the disease which is caused is caused by this. Now what exactly happens when this disease is caused that we will take up in a minute. <clears throat> but before that, let us talk about the structure and try to understand how this infection is caused. Structure because it is in sarcodina, it is irregular in shape because its locomotion is with pseudopodia. A prominent nucleus is present, but there are no contractile vacuoles. So in this case, we do not find contractile vacuoles. So there are no contractile vacuoles. Function of contractile vacuole was osmoregulation, which is required when outer environment or outer environmental conditions change as we saw in case of amoeba. Amoeba is fresh water so if concentration outside that is in water in which amoeba is found changes then amoeba has to adjust its water and iron balance for which it has contractile vacuum. It is found in intestine. Now when it is in intestine the conditions are going to remain same all the time so they do not need any contractile vacuum. The infection which is caused <coughs> is in the form of a tetranucleate cyst. Now what exactly happens is when we take any contaminated food contaminated with these tetranucleate cysts, this cyst enters our digestive system from where it changes into the minuta stage. That is <coughs> the first stage, minuta stage. Minuta changes into magma stage, that is trophozoid. <coughs> the cyst is tetranucleate, but there are eight minuta which come out of this one cyst. So if we talk about this cyst, which is one, two, three, four, tetranucleate, it must be undergoing one mitotic division so that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight minuta released. These minuta change into magma, and magma secretes histolytic substance. Histolytic substance damages, digests the tissue of the elementary canal. That means it starts to break down the lining of the elementary canal. So histolytic uh, substance damages intestinal lining <clears throat> and that is why it is called histolytic substance. Histo is for tissue, lysis is for breakdown and so is the name histolytica. So infective stage yeah, or infectious stage we can call it in infectious stage is the tetranucleate cyst. 
इन्फेक्शन स्टेज इज टेट्रा न्यूक्लियर सिस्ट पैथोजेनिक स्टेज इज मैग्मा पैथोजेनिक स्टेज इज मैग्मा इन्फेक्टिव स्टेज मीन्स द स्टेज इन विच वी गेट द इन्फेक्शन सो दिस इन्फेक्शन रीचेस आज थ्रू कंटेमिनेटेड फूड एंड वॉटर इन द फॉर्म ऑफ अ सिस्ट and this cyst is tetranuclear this is very important for us to remember from the cyst from one cyst eight minutas would be released these minutas would change into a trophozoite or magma which is a pathogenic that means the disease causing stage now the disease when disease is caused that means the histolytic substance has started to damage the lining and the disease is known as amebiasis because there is this end ameba which is causing this uh, disease there are there are cramps because of this scraping off or damage of the intestinal lining abdominal pain and there can be blood which is found in the stool in case of this amebiasis the symptom is abdominal pain cramps in the abdomen and acidic stool the fecal matter it becomes acidic so these are three symptoms which are very common in amebiasis it is also known as amoebic dysentery because in this there is dysentery also and in dysentery <clears throat> one more symptom that we can write is dysentery in dysentery along with stool there is mucus and blood which would be lost now why would mucus be lost because the tissue is being scraped off damaged so the mucus lining is also lost and blood can also be seen in stool because whenever the epithelial lining and the tissue is damaged blood vessels would also rupture and that blood would be seen in stool so these are the symptoms of amebiasis so we call it that it is a dimorphic one one is minuta stage other is magma stage infection reaches us through contaminated food and water in the form of cyst now these stages they have to survive on some food particles so what they do is they feed on or we can write it here that end amoeba feeds on rbcs so our rbcs are the food for this end amoeba so this is how the life cycle of end amoeba takes place only one host is required that is human and in the intestine is where it is found there is one more example which we can take in this sarcodina and that example is our fifth one it is end amoeba gingivalis it is commonly known as mouth amoeba and amoeba gingivalis is known as mouth amoeba and the reason it is called mouth amoeba because it is found in the mouth it is found in tartar of teeth and it aggravates it aggravates pyorrhea pyorrhea is a condition where the gums become swollen and start to bleed now here we have written aggregate uh, sorry aggravate that means if a person has pyorrhea and gets this infection then pyorrhea would get aggravated and amoeba gingivalis doesn't cause pyorrhea so there are two different thing one the condition which causes pyorrhea different but if a person has this condition and gets the infection of end amoeba gingivalis then pyorrhea would get aggravated so this aggravated aggravated term is important here the gums are swollen and start to bleed this condition that is pyorrhea is also known as gingivitis named after gingivalis so we can call it pyorrhea or gingivitis so these are some important examples of the group sarcodina in protozoan protus now in the next video we'll take up 
another important group of protozoa.